What's cooking, Timberwolves? All right, so this week we're gonna do some pizza. Um, for those of you guys who've already been through my rotations in grade six, uh, we do this as a final lab, it's awesome. Um, for those of you guys who do not have yeast, this is an option to make pizza dough, and it comes together really, really quick. We're actually gonna make a biscuit dough, um, and then put pizza sauce and cheese on it, which is always really good, all right? Um, again, if you don't have the means to make pizza or don't have the time, because typically pizza takes about 45 minutes to an hour and a half for it to rise because it's a re yeast dough, um, this one's a really good option, okay? So for this recipe, um, you will need margarine or butter, and then I'm going to do it with uh, pizza sauce, which I'm going to make, but if you have pizza sauce at home, you can definitely use that. Um, or if you have some pesto, um, and then you've got some cheese with this one as well. You can make this dairy-free, it, it does work. Uh, gluten-free, if you are gonna do a biscuit dough gluten-free, anytime you do some sort of dough where you break, cut in fat, it makes kind of a crumbly mess, but you can totally do it, okay? It's one of those tied, tested and true recipes. Away we go. So I'm gonna show you the recipe. If you would like to put more toppings than just what is listed, you can definitely do that. Just keep in mind that any sort of hard veg will take longer to cook. There goes my dog. Um, so, <laughs> very first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is I am going to wash my hands. Just trying to make sure he's okay. We have a fenced yard, so we're all good. For this one especially, I need to make sure that my hands are clear because I am going to be rolling this out um, and kneading it, and so I do want to make sure that I have all everything off of my arms and that I wash them really well. For the preheat on this one, it is uh, 450 degrees convection or 475 bake. Um, watch it though, okay, because this is a really high heat, and typically when we cook pizza, we have it at a higher heat. Um, just because it's like a quick rise, that's what biscuits are too. Um, so you're gonna watch on time. Um, if you know that your oven runs hot, watch the cooking time. Um, but you do need to make sure that your biscuit cooks through because if not, then it's gonna be really weird in the center. So I'm gonna do uh, 450 and away I go. All right, so for equipment for this one, I am gonna be using my trusty pastry blender. And if you do not have a trusty uh, trusty pastry blender. Use a sturdy fork instead to cut in the fat. Um, and then, of course, I've got my rolling pin, which is massive, but you guys can definitely use this for uh, glass or something just to make sure it's flat. Um, and then I've got my big bowl. My little bowl is going to be used for my pizza sauce, but I'm going to hold that off to the side for now. And then I've got my small liquid measure. So, biscuit dough. Uh, Pretty basic when we do biscuit dough. We're gonna mix dry ingredients together. We're then gonna cut in fats. We're going to slowly add milk, and then we're gonna to bring together to knead for a little bit on a lightly floured surface, um, and then shape how we need to, okay? So for this recipe, I will be using 250 milliliters of flour, and then it says plus extra. This extra is gonna be the extra amount that I'm going to put onto my surface when I knead and transfer my dough. I'm going to heat and level off. And then I'm going to be putting in my baking powder. So 10 milliliters. So I'm going to do two fives.
right, so I'm going to take my utility fork and I'm going to mix it. And then I'm going to grab my margarine. Now you want your margarine to be pretty cold, okay? You want it fresh out from the oven, or sorry, from the oven, from the fridge. Let's try that again. Um, because when I cut in my butter, I want to make sure that I have pea-like pieces that I can still see. Really good uh, biscuit dough that's really flaky, still has pieces of margarine or butter in it. So please do not melt this in any way. You want it to hold up and you want to be able to cut this in pretty easily using your pastry blender. And I'm just gonna scrape down the bowls while I go. And again, I want it to resemble coarse crumbs or small pea-like pieces that are covered in flour. I'm gonna scrape off all of this excess stuff from my pastry blender so it's easier to wash. And this is what my consistency is going to look like. So I've got all these pieces that are covered and that's what I want. Now, for this recipe, I can either use milk um, for my liquid or I can use water, okay? Um, I would advise milk. I think it makes for a better pastry. But if you are lactose intolerant or have an allergy, you can do water. You can also do almond milk. It totally works. Um, or another nut milk, if you would like, or lactose free. Um, so for this recipe, it does say 80 milliliters. Usually when I do this, I need 100. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go closer to 100 in my small liquid measure. And again, when I'm measuring flat, stable surface, go down to eye level and then go slightly above. Okay. So I've got my milk. I've got my dough here that I'm starting. And again, I'm going to use my utility fork and I'm slowly going to add in my milk. And what I'm going to do is I want my dough to start to pull away. So I'm just going to mix it with my fork. Once I get to the part where my fork is not effective and it's not really working that well, that's when I'm going to use my hands. But what I want is a slightly sticky dough when I turn this out. So it's getting kind of shaggy, which is great. I'm now going to start using my hands. I'm going to see if this is going to start together. I think I need a little bit more liquid. And the liquid could change depending on the day, depending on the type of flour. You just have to be really, really flexible with it. And if you need more, you take more, but do not dump it in all at once, okay? Because you don't know how much liquid you're actually going to need. So I've got a good ball there, but I would like to incorporate this as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more milk. And I'm going to be kneading this on flour, so I do want it to be slightly sticky when I turn it out. All right, so I'm going to make a shaggy uh, ball. That's kind of what it looks like. I'm going to be turning it out onto my surface. So for this, I'm going to make sure that my surface is clean. It's been wiped off and dried really, really well. Um, I'm actually going to uh, wash my hands because I need to grab some flour and crotch have it originally. So typically when I grab flour, I usually grab a little bit extra um, just to fill the bottom of my 250. So that's what I'm going to do. I am not going to grab it with my hands, okay? I just don't want to put my hands straight in there. I'm always very conscious. So lightly floured surface is what I'm looking for. If you do get too much, you're, you're gonna be fine. Flour down your hands and then your rolling pin as well as you're doing this. And then turn out your dough. So I turned it out. That's basically what turning out is. 
So I'm gonna try to peel off most of the dough. My kids are having fun. And I'm actually gonna take a pastry scrape and I don't know if some of you guys have one of these. Um, I definitely use these at the school and I love these. I use these quite a bit. And I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna scrape down my bowl. If you do not have one of these, it's fine. Um, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that when you wash your bowl, you're really, really careful to get all of the um, dough out because it can get stuck and it can go translucent and then you have a cake down there. So for me, now that the dough is still pliable, it has not dried out. I know some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, the sound. I'm just gonna scrape down my bowl so that it's much, much easier to clean. Okay, so I've got a shaggy ball like, well, it doesn't even look like a ball. It's just a bunch of dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to knead. When I knead, I'm gonna put my heel in, press out, quarter turn, and fold. And I'm only gonna do this eight to 10 times or until I make a smooth dough. Okay, do not over knead your biscuits, your dough, whatever, okay? If you overstretch the gluten, it gets really tough and then rolling out becomes hard and then the actual biscuit or actual dough itself gets really dense, okay? So I'm just gonna have this come together and I wanna see my um, butter pieces in there. So I'm gonna fold, quarter turn, fold, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, to turn and what I'm looking for again is that smooth dough and that comes together really fast okay once I've got that and it's still pliable I'm actually gonna take my rolling pin and I'm just gonna start rolling this out now I want to make a pretty thin crust because I want my biscuit to fully bake okay you can try to do a round one. I usually typically do like a rectangle-ish looking one. It's kind of like an oval. And I will be creating a crust. So don't worry too much about the shape. And I do not want to overroll this. Because that's going to make for a really tough crust then. So this makes, oh, there goes my oven. This makes for a good individual size pizza. And if it starts sticking to my rolling pin, I'm just gonna grab any excess flour I have and um, flour it down. I'll transfer this. Now I have parchment on my uh, baking pan, but if you wanted to, uh, you could use cornmeal, which is typically what they use with pizza, and you could do a little bit down. Parchment for me works pretty well. So now that I've got my shape, I'm actually gonna fold this and pinch just to create a bit of a crust. Now, this is gonna look like a rustic style pizza, okay? So do not worry if it doesn't stretch or if it doesn't look like a regular pizza. This isn't, this is a biscuit dough pizza, okay? But trust me, it still tastes good. All right, so I've got my pizza. If I wanted to stretch it out a little bit more, I can. It's a good shape. I'm now gonna get together the stuff for uh, my piece of sauce. Before I do that though, I am going to just scrape down my countertop before I put water or wash it off, okay? So I'm gonna scrape this down so that I do not get a glom. If I was to add water to this, it would be super sticky and basically create like a paste. If I got any dough in my rolling pin, I'm gonna scrape that down as well and put it off to the side. I can actually put this straight into it. All right. So for the pizza sauce, what I'm looking at is tomato sauce, and seasoning. So I said oregano and basil, which is their traditional uh, pizza sauce flavors. I'm actually gonna use Italian seasoning. I have that, so I'm gonna use that instead. And instead of putting um, two milliliters in it, I am actually gonna put five because I like more seasoning. So I'm gonna measure out my pizza sauce by using my um, dry measure. 
Um, I could use my liquid measure, but I already used it for my um, milk. And my kids don't actually like a lot of pizza sauce, which is who this is for. Um, so I'm actually only gonna do 15 milliliters. But if you do like more pizza sauce, I would definitely do the 100. Um, and again, I'm just gonna grab my seasoning. There goes my tap, that's not very sanitary. Excuse me. Never a dull moment in my house, for sure. I'm just gonna wipe this down. Grab my spoon and I'm going to just mix these seasonings with the pizza sauce together. So I'm just gonna spread this. And my kids really don't like pizza sauce. So this will be just, just enough sauce. Now, if you wanted to do a stuffed crust, you totally could. You would just put cheese around the outside and then fold it in. Super easy. All right, and again, my kids don't like a lot of cheese. They're a little bit picky. So I'm just gonna take my mozzarella and whatever cheese you guys have on hand, just use it. Mozzarella, of course, is traditional pizza cheese, um, but it's up to you. When I am grating, I'm making sure to use the longest piece, right? And you also wanna make sure you don't get your knuckles there because the amount of times that I've seen kids grate their knuckles is a lot. Okay, and always go in a downward motion. And especially with mozzarella, because it's super pliable, just watch your fingers. Once I start getting to the smaller bits, I'm just actually gonna flatten my hands against, and again, just downward motion. So I think I said like 100 milliliters of mozzarella, um, it's, it's not very much, like it's, yeah. And if you want more cheese, do more cheese. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm just going to put it over top and mozzarella will spread as it melts. And I will now begin cooking this. All right, so I think I said eight to 10 minutes. What you're looking for is you want the crust to be brown around the outside. Please do not judge this by just the cheese melting, okay? Because you will still have a raw biscuit in the middle and that's not what you want, all right? So I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna set my timer to the eight minutes. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna take a look at my stuff that I need to clean, okay? Please make sure that when you're cleaning your pastry blenders that you're taking a look at going in between each one of these so that it gets really, really well cleaned because a lot of people end up missing and then you're taking in other portions of like butter and stuff like that from the past and it's not so good, okay? 